Welcome, one and all, to the mystical world of Felbar. Adventures abound throughout this realm, and we appreciate the opportunity to regale you with some stories from these trails. These accounts are all based on actual RPG experiences that occurred within Adventures in Felbar. Some of these tales may be for mature audiences, while others may be for very immature audiences. We now present the sage Mikas Tumo from Tamel, also known as the Bard of Felbar. Welcome to Session Fartook-82. In our previous episode, the adventurers found themselves in the middle of a large street celebration with miners and citizens alike. The ale flowed freely and a band played well into the early morning, causing a festival-like atmosphere that was enjoyed by all. We rejoin the party the next morning as Karina wakes up to some loud squawking by Peepers the Axe Beak. Blinking her eyes, the wave quickly realized that her pet was upset and rushed to the window to check on it. Looking out into the morning sun, she observed that Peepers was secured to a post and Eddie, the stable boy, was outside the corral. The crippled boy was surrounded by some larger teenage boys who were obviously picking on him. Hastily getting dressed, Karina ran down the stairs to confront the bullies. Knock it off, boys, yelled the waif. The young men were considerably older than Eddie, who was cowering in fear at their presence. Trying to crawl over to Karina, he was blocked by an older youth who decided to square off with the young woman. Facing off with Karina, the indignant youth challenged her position. Putting her hands on her hips, she glared at the young man. Well, lady, what are you going to do about it? I asked if you wanted to fight, snarled the bully. Karina disarmed the boy with a crooked smile and a soft voice. Her reply caught the young man off guard and tipped the balance of power back to her favor. Fight you, she laughed. Boy, I've braved tombs and orc packs. Dealing with you will garner me no benefit. No, I will not be fighting you. Tossing her head to Eddie, she pointed out that he would be fighting the street tough. The group laughed hysterically as Eddie grew even more frightened. Sure, lady, Eddie here is real tough. He's going to protect your honor, said the boy in a mocking tone. Karina nodded her head and helped Eddie up as the street tough took off his shirt and spit in his hands, taunting Eddie with some well-described sentences at the beating that was about to ensue. Karina looked down at the crippled stable boy, who was obviously scared to death. Holding a finger to his lips, she felt him tremble in fear. Shh, Eddie, listen to me very carefully. This kid is a bully. Nothing more, nothing less. And the thing about a bully is, once you beat him, and I mean really badly, they will never bother you again. Tears dripped from Eddie's eyes and his concern was overwhelming, especially with the renewed taunting. Karina locked eye contact with him and pointed out that she and Peepers would be right here if he was, and he was in no danger. In a hushed tone, she pointed out one sure trick that always worked for her. Quickly explaining it to him, the boy shook his head in acknowledgement and started to question the plan. She pinched his lips shut with her fingers and said, Trust me, do what I told you and you'll be fine. Eddie shook his head again and dragged his crippled leg away from the fence to square off with the larger bully. A look back to Karina saw her nod and the boy gulped noticeably. Get ready, Eddie, for a whooping you won't forget, snarled the bully. As the boy drew back his hand, the stable boy prepared himself for the punch. The assault came, but Eddie dipped to the right and blasted the bully with a solid strike to the jawline, knocking him to the ground. The stable boy then began a severe pummeling as the bully's friends stepped up to assist their associate. A shrill whistle from Karina caused Peepers to yank the post out of the ground and charge the fence line. The power of the bird caused the rest of the boys to flee in fear and Karina pulled Eddie off his battered opponent. Years of rage had manifested it into the pummeling and tears flowed from the crippled boy at the sweet revenge. Cowering in fear, Karina lifted the bully to his feet and ordered him to apologize to Eddie. The heartfelt apology from the bleeding bully caused the tears to stop. Karina pulled him from the bully and whispered closely into the young man's ear. 
if you ever pick on him again, I'll let my axe beak eat out your heart. And if you ever speak to a lady the way you did to me, I will skin your family. Get out of here. And toss the boy back to the ground. The bully quickly scampered off in the same direction as his friends had gone earlier. The waif moved to the fence where an exhausted Eddie stood with peepers standing over him. Eddie stuttered out a grateful apology, but the kneeling Karina shook her head. I know what it's like to get bullied, and I hate bullies too. You have to trust in yourself, Eddie. You handle horses. Horses! They are far stronger than those kids. If they ever bother you again, just remember how you handle the mounts and handle the bullies in the same way, and you'll do fine. Spotting blood on the boy's hands, she walked over to the well with him and cleaned him up. His tears had left lines in the dirt on his face, and Karina carefully rubbed them clean and was taken aback momentarily. Seeing the concern in her face, the boy inquired if something was wrong. She stared at him in amazement and shook her head. Yes, yes, there is something very wrong. The boy became alarmed, by the, but the waif spoke again. There is a cute boy underneath all that road dust. She laughed, breaking the tension, and the boy shook his head sheepishly. Karina smiled and kissed him on the forehead, gently, and told him he was going to be all right now. Pointing out the bully would likely never bother him again, she explained that his little toadies would avoid the fists of damage Eddie from now on. Telling him to tend to his chores, she watched him hobble off, followed by Peepers the axe beak. As the waif turned, she noticed Lady Irena watching the situation unfold from the window. The elven woman did not look pleased at the issue, and left the view. Great, thought Karina. Now I'm in trouble with Irena. As she continued towards the front of the inn to return to her room, a group of five horsemen sped down the street, knocking over a vendor's cart and nearly running down the waif. She cast an insult at the horsemen, but received no answer as they sped towards the guard building. Bullies are everywhere today, she mused, and entered the building to get dressed. After climbing the stairs, she arrived at a room where both ladies were finishing up getting ready for the day. Lady Irena didn't speak a word, and Karina felt the need to explain herself. Sister Elaine was listening in, but it was clear that she had apparently missed something. After giving her recitation to a blank-looking mage, she stopped speaking. Lady Irena stood and put her hand on the woman's shoulder. I completely agree with your handling of the situation. However, that boy was much larger than Eddie, and it could have gone quite badly. I did, however, have a web spell prepared in the event that it was needed, but it seems that your assessment of the boy was correct in him handling the situation. A smile crossed Karina's face at the compliment, and she explained her hatred for bullies and rude people. It's like when I was coming back inside and was nearly run over by the asses in their gray cloaks. Why, they nearly... But she was cut off in mid-sentence by the two women. The pair peppered Karina about the encounter and were horrified when she explained that there were five horsemen, all wearing gray cloaks, and headed for the guard station. Sister Elaine moved to her armor and began to change quickly out of the civilized attire that she had on. Karina was clearly confused and watched as Lady Irena began to beat on the men's door frantically. As the waif watched, the cleric donned her armor and she inquired if she should get on hers. Sister Elaine pointed out yes, adding, fast, as if your life depended on it. We close out this episode now and give you our thanks for listening. Please subscribe to this podcast, and don't forget to follow us on Twitter, at The Bards Podcast. For everyone in Adventures of Philbar, thanks for listening.